I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ. High-flying Kite Pharma could score big with its new cancer treatment. I'm Patricia Wu at the New York Stock Exchange. Is it time to short small cap stocks or put more money to work? We'll hear from both sides. I'm Remy Blair reporting from San Francisco. Oprah is making a big bet on Weight Watchers, but let's see how one biopharma name in the weight loss space is faring after last week's clinical hold. Also, the battle for a small cap chip maker is heating up on Monday. Hello and welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ. Kite Pharma, one of the hottest biotech startups on Wall Street, hopes to revolutionize the treatment of a common, deadly lymphatic cancer with a novel mix of highly trained lab techs and high-speed air travel. The Los Angeles Times says the company's treatment of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma reprograms a patient's T-cells, the kind that are supposed to fight disease to seek and destroy only abnormal cancerous lymph cells, not the healthy ones crucial for human life. But in order to do so, blood must be drawn from a patient, refrigerated, and flown to Kite's headquarters, where the cells are modified, frozen, and then flown back to doctors who re-inject them into patients. Although it could be a year or longer before the FDA approves its treatment for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the clinical results are so promising that Kite has forged ahead with construction of a 44,000 square foot facility in Southern California that would become its cancer-fighting nerve center. Well, Oprah Winfrey taking a 10% stake in Weight Watchers. The media mogul is also joining its board of directors, sending shares soaring. Winfrey says she believes in the program so much that she decided to invest in the company and partner in its evolution. Shares of Weight Watchers jumped 59% on that news, and the stock has tumbled about 72% over the past year as Weight Watchers has struggled with dwindling membership. Well, Match.com wants to tie the knot with Wall Street. The company that owns dating sites Tinder, OkCupid, okay and Match.com filed documents for an initial public offering. It plans to list its shares on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol MTCH. The preliminary filing indicated Match would raise up to $100 million, a figure used to calculate filing fees, but that is often changed. Match's listing seeks to capitalize on the booming market for dating sites in the U.S. In fact, the company logged $888 million in revenue in 2014, up about 11 percent from the previous year, according to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Well, U.S. automated teller machine maker Diebold is in talks to buy Wincor Nixdorf in a deal that would value the German company at more than $1.7 billion. The talks come as the ATM and checkout machine making industry is shifting towards software-based solutions, which are costly to develop amid declining prices for traditional hardware business. And Angie's List investor pushing a merger with Home Advisor, TCS Capital Management, which has a 9% stake in the struggling consumer reviews and marketplace company, called out Angie's List board chairman, John Chuang, noting that the company's shares have declined nearly 50% since he became chairman 18 months ago. And also, uh, we're watching here today at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, uh, some bad news for high-flying solar stocks. One analyst says it's time to sell Solar City, one of the biggest. Axiom Capital says utilities appear to be better placed to win the net metering battle, and they're adding that there's outsized risk to Solar City's valuation. Patricia Wu is at the New York Stock Exchange with more on today's trading. Hi, Jane. I'm here with Keith Bliss, Senior Vice President at Katone & Company, and we've been talking about the dollar rally. We hear a lot about how it affects the big guys and their exports, but is there an impact with small caps as well, even though they primarily do their business in the U.S.? There is, uh, and it's one of the things that I think a lot of investors and pundits don't pick up on is when you have a dollar rally, then all goods produced by all American companies and, all, and sold by all American companies become more expensive to everybody, including here domestically. So what the dollar rally does for smaller cap companies is it invites competition from overseas to come into their local market, and that's where they get impacted. So you're absolutely right, Patricia. The larger cap guys are worried about their goods becoming more expensive trying to sell it overseas, but the smaller cap guys here in the United States also need to be concerned about a dollar rally because of the competition that can now come on our shores and take their business here domestically. So how do you play that then? Do you short the small cap stocks? Well, I think you got to be careful about what sector you look at and there are some good sectors that you could short if you think that the dollar rally will continue to, to pick and pick up steam as we go through the next few quarters and all indications are that it will especially if the Fed starts to move a little bit on monetary policy 
then probably all sectors are going to be vulnerable, especially those that are going to be competing against some foreign companies in the electronic space, some in the healthcare space. Um, there are some sectors that you could actually get at right now with the small caps, primarily uh, inside of the energy sector. The entire energy complex is susceptible to shorting, but especially in the small cap space, which tends to be the smaller exploration guys that are standing, standing out in the, um, in the uh, Bach, Bakken and the Eagle Ford shell formations. Those are areas where you can probably get some good shorts on right now. Before I let you go, the earnings outlook for the small caps. Well, right now it's a big, bit of a mixed bag. Um, there is a tendency for people to think that the small caps are going to perform well because of lower energy prices here in the U.S. They should be the ones that benefit the most as opposed to large cap guys. But again, I think you need to pick and choose the proper sectors. I would stay away from the energy small caps. I'd probably stay away from the home builder small caps right now. If you think we're at the, at the apex of the economic cycle right now, home builders will start to get hit in here. Go into biotechs for investment opportunities uh, in some of those other sectors. So the earnings picture, I think, is going to be muddled a little bit, depending upon the sector. We should see a contraction in the earnings like we're going to see across the board, probably down 3 to 4% from this quarter, uh, from a year-on-year -year, uh, perspective. So anyway, you have, to, you have to choose wisely and be selective. Thank you so much, Keith. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Coming up next, a small cap company hopes to make it big with a proposed obesity drug. However, problems with the clinical trial is creating a wild ride on the stock market. The details when Small Cap Nation returns. Guys, I got the jerseys. Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. El Nino. Aquí. Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. I think that's me. You guy. It's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. Okay, got it. So Hattrick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go, Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. Doug, <gasps> you've been staring at that for a while, huh? Listen, TD Ameritrade has former floor traders to help walk you through that complex trade, so you'll be confident enough to do what you want. I'll pull up your number. <laughs> Blammo. Let's get those guys on the horn. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like it is time to upgrade your phone, Douglas. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Everyone works hard for a reason. Working together, we can help you prepare financially for when two becomes three. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Remy, in the broader market, the focus is on Weight Watchers International after Oprah took the investment in a company. Uh, but there's also, uh, in the small cap space, Zafgen uh, getting a lot of moves lately. What's behind that? Zafgen is back in the spotlight on Monday after last week's sell-off, the company's shares are seeing green. On Friday, Zafgen settled down by nearly 51% in high-volume trade. The Boston pharmaceutical firm announced that the FDA ordered a partial clinical hold on one of its trials after an enrolled patient died. Considering its sharp drop in share price, today's advance is only a small move higher. Zafgen lost two-thirds of its value on Friday, so the company's 10% gain today is only a fraction of a move to the upside. Also, JMP Securities downgraded Zafgen to market perform from market outperform. Separately, SunTrust maintained a buy rating on the company and lowered the price target to $25 from $47. It has been a volatile ride for Zafgen. There's a lot of concern about its new drug. How does it work? 
The Lorinib is a twice-weekly injection that is being developed for obesity and obesity-related disorders. The drug is in Phase 3 clinical trials for treatment of obesity and hyperphagia, which is an abnormal appetite for food associated with injury to the hypothalamus, and this is in Prader-Willis syndrome patients. The FDA ordered a partial clinical hold to screen patients for thrombotic disease. Now, the patient who was enrolled in Zafgen's clinical trial died after taking its experimental drug. Zafgen learned of a death in the ongoing phase 3 study of the Lorinib in a uh, Prader-Willis syndrome patient. Now, as soon as the company obtains informed consent from patients and screens them for blood clot disorders, the FDA will allow the trial to resume. In addition, Zafgen anticipates that the Phase 3 clinical trial will be initiated after a full assessment of the safety and efficacy of the drug. What's the near-term outlook for Zafgen? While well, investors and consumers alike know that safety and effectiveness are key for drugs, currently Zafgen is taking precautions and making amendments to its Belorinib trial. The company will attempt to screen out anyone at high risk for blood clots. Many patients who are severely obese or have PWS are at risk for blood clots. Zafgen plans to monitor its future patients for uh, those symptoms and for blood clots, but going forward, it may be a challenge for the company to treat patients and prove that Belorinib is effective while minimizing risk and ensuring safety. Coming up next, we take you to Europe, where one popular music streaming company has big plans for their upcoming IPO. Graham Brown has the latest from Paris when Small Cap Nation returns. Good. Very good. You see something moving off the shelves and your first thought is to investigate the company. You are type E. Yes, investment opportunities can be anywhere. <laughs> or not. But you know the difference. E-Trade's barcode scanner. Shorten the distance between intuition and action. E-Trade. Opportunity is everywhere. Everyone works hard for a reason. Working together, we can help you prepare financially for when two becomes three. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Sometimes the present looked bright, sometimes romantic. There were tears in my eyes, and tears in my eyes. And so many little things that we learned were really the biggest things. Through it all, we saved and had a retirement plan and someone who listened and helped us along the way. Because we always knew that someday the future would be the present. Every someday needs a plan. Talk with us about your retirement today. Graham Brown is in Paris with how European small cap stocks are starting the week. The market closed the end of the week and reopened with the European stock index 600 uh, slightly up. The German DAX and the France CAC uh, essentially flat. The UK FTSE and Spain IBX slightly lower and the Netherlands AMX significantly higher. But as long as we have this lack of direction from the central banks we mentioned earlier, Fed, BOE, ECB, it's probably that the new normal will continue of basically flat with overlaid volatility. Uh, ECB policymaker Ewald Nowotny on Thursday said that fresh measures were needed to lift inflation towards the 2% monetary target. Uh, and the weak inflation figure comes despite 60 million euros a month's asset purchase program, which is already in place and due to run until next September. However, they are now talking about possibly extending the program, enlarging it. Uh, and we will see 
uh, later in the week when the ECB Monetary Committee meets uh, on Thursday and then we have further European PMI data due out on Friday. On the currency markets, the euro is annoyingly continuing to hold its strength against the dollar and pound, uh, regardless of the ECB's desire to weaken it. And Graham, what are we expecting for the small cap space in Europe this week? Well, yes, Jane, as we said earlier, we will be testing the IPO market today and on Wednesday. Today, the City of London Group is launching an IPO on the AIM, our London Stock Exchange AIM. This is a group that focuses investing in providing finance to SME and professional service sectors in the United Kingdom and it does this by financing trade and securing specialist funding to the supply chain and helping to fuel growth in these sectors. Its new investment policy declared is that its principal investment objective of the company will be to get a total return for shareholders in excess of 8% per annum, measured on a five-year rolling basis. It mainly aims to achieve that through investing primarily in the financial services sector through a series of equity and non-equity investments in unquoted platforms and companies which provide specialist financing and alternative asset management services. The company will give particular focus to the SME market and professional services uh, and it's particularly looking for uh, companies just past seed funding and in early stage but uh, track record building. On Wednesday we have Evgen Farmer who will be coming to the London AIM also, more coverage then. And Jane, a really interesting IPO that's raising a lot of European interest French music company Deezer is planning a 3 million IPO to help take it on Spotify and Apple Music. Deezer announced on Thursday that it wants to raise at least 300 million euros through a public listing in France on the Euronext before the end of the month. The startup will offer new shares at anywhere between 36.4 and 49.24 euros. Quite a range which suggests that the markets are still very uncertain on IPO appetite, but meaning the listing could be worth 300 million uh, euros. Analysts cited by Reuters said the company's valuation could wind up between 900 million and 1.1 billion, making it the France's latest tech unicorn. The company has focused on expanding in Europe and emerging markets since launching in 2007, teaming up with mobile telephone companies uh, to help it sell its premium tier, and finally entered the US in late 2014, partnering with Sonos and Bose. It is now available in more than 180 countries. The shares will be available to investors in France, uh, and abroad through domestic subscription it will close for French investors on the 26th next week and international investors on the 27th. So more coverage next week. It should tell us a lot about uh, the appetite for IPOs in Europe. Still ahead, we take you back to the Silicon Valley where a possible huge deal is brewing in the chip maker space. We'll have the details straight ahead. Guys, I got the jerseys. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. El Nino. Aquí. Ready? Spray Dan. Oh, yeah. Don Ovan. I think that's me. You guy. It's 40 bucks. Can you cover that? I'll send it to you right now. Done. OK, got it. So Hattrick Rick, he's the best player on our team. You get the ball, you give it to him. Great. Rick. Ooh. On your phone, online, on the go, Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. All right, Don, you're on. Nope, just kidding. Doug, you've been staring at that for a while, huh? Listen, TD Ameritrade has former floor traders to help walk you through that complex trade, so you'll be confident enough to do what you want. I'll pull up your number. <laughs> Blammo. Let's get those guys on the horn. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like it is time to upgrade your phone, Douglas. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this.
Everyone works hard for a reason. Working together, we can help you prepare financially for when two becomes three. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. There's a new battle brewing in the chip space with PNC Sierra in focus. Remy Blair joins us from San Francisco with more on that. Remy? Well, Jane, the battle for Sunnyvale, California-based PMC Sierra continues. M&A Monday is heating up in the chipmaker space. Another California chipmaker offered to acquire PMC in a cash and stock deal worth $2.4 billion. Micro Semi Corporation's offer to PMC's board of directors follows another recent offer from Skyworks Solutions. Wilbur, Massachusetts-based Skyworks offered PMC $2 billion in cash. Microsemi's deal topped Skyworks bid, and not surprisingly, PMC Sierra is seeing a pop straight out of the gate this morning. Well, this bodes well for PMC Sierra with Microsemi stepping into the ring. What does this mean for the chip industry? Well, PMC makes semiconductors for telecommunications networks and data storage. It was founded back in 1984, and last year it posted revenue of $526 million and has about 1,450 employees worldwide. In its offer, Microsemi said it would be willing to pay about $11.50 in cash and stock for each share of PMC. That is a 50% premium to its closing price from the day before the Skyworks offer was announced. Now, Microsemi says a takeover at PMC Sierra would let it expand its product offering and also allow the combined company to save more than $100 million a year in expenses. And there has been lots of consolidation in the semiconductor industry. Remy, what does this mean for the entire industry overall? That's a great point, Jane. We've been seeing the big names scoop up chip makers in multi-billion dollar deals. Chip makers around the globe are trying to boost their scale and product offerings, all while cutting costs. This year, we saw Avago Technologies and NXP Semiconductors, as well as Intel, make multi-billion dollar acquisitions. Avago agreed to acquire Broadcom for $37 billion. Its chips are used in iPhones and other consumer devices. Separately, Intel agreed to pay $16.7 billion for chipmaker Altero. And NXP Semiconductor scooped up Freescale Semiconductor for $11.8 billion. As our consumption and our appetite for tech gadgets continue, we're sure to see lots of action in the space. Straight ahead, we take you back to the floor of the NYSE where Patricia Wu interviews analyst Alan Valdez. He's talking about small caps, of course, and what investors should look out for today. We'll be right back. Good. Very good. You see something moving off the shelves, and your first thought is to investigate the company. You are type E. Yes, investment opportunities can be anywhere. Or not. But you know the difference. E-Trade's barcode scanner. Shorten the distance between intuition and action. E-Trade. Opportunity is everywhere. Everyone works hard for a reason. Working together, we can help you prepare financially for when two becomes three. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Sometimes the present looked bright, sometimes romantic. There were tears in my eyes, and tears in my eyes. And so many little things that we learned were really the biggest things. Through it all, we saved and had a retirement plan and someone who listened and helped us along the way. Because we always knew that someday the future would be the present. Every someday needs a plan. Talk with us about your retirement today.
Welcome back to Small Cap Nation. I'm Patricia Wu here with Alan Valdez, senior partner with Silver Bear Limited. So Alan and I have been talking about the three straight weeks of gains that we saw in equities. What are you expecting from the Russell 2000? Historically, it has outperformed the large caps. You know, I, I think it's going to parallel, but do a little better than the S&P or the Dow, uh, especially coming up now. I mean, we have end of earnings season, but remember, we're coming into the holiday season. So a lot of these small caps are retailers, which people are going to go out, like Sears Holdings, for instance. You have a lot of these major retailers that are really small caps that get very busy over the holiday season here and abroad. So then would you put more money to work then? I'd be very selective. I do like the retail sector in the Russell. I think that, if you look back, that totally outperforms the Dow or the S&P in the last quarter of the year. So I'd definitely take a look at them, pick a stock that's right now off its high, and really take a close look. But that's where I put my money right now. Other than retail, are you looking at any other sectors? Well, the biotechs, the small cap biotechs, always a small, always a great sector. Not so much end of the year type of you know holiday shopping thing, but always a good sector to look at. Biotechs always hot. It's probably going to stay hot for the next couple of years, and the small caps definitely have a lot of nice biotechs you could take a look at. Thanks, so much, Alan. Thanks, Patricia. All right, you heard it here first. That does it for Alan and I here at the New York Stock Exchange. Back to you, Jane. Thank you for joining us on Small Cap Nation. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Have a great day.